Hi, this is Anne Benson, and today I want to show you the basics of creating a structured purse without a frame. I'm demonstrating with my Purse of Cows, a 5 by 7 by 2 inch flat bottom beaded clutch stitched on a non-woven base. But you can make a purse of nearly any shape by supporting the various parts, the front, back, and base, with a semi-rigid plastic in sheet form. This is Sherry Serafini's award-winning and very unusually shaped purse, Jeannie's New Hangout, originally mounted on a one-of-a-kind vintage purse form. The reproduction is supported with a material called graphics plastic, 20-point weight, but you can use any cuttable plastic sheeting. So you may want to start saving those plastic gallon milk cartons. This is my bombshell purse, supported front, back, and base with the same material. FYI, parts that need to bend should not be supported. In the purse of Kell's clutch, the flap and gussets have an additional layer of non-woven, so they hold shape, but no plastic, so they can still move. The supports need to be about one-eighth inch smaller all around than the size of your part to allow room for basting and edging. Trace your beaded piece. Then reduce its size all around by one-eighth inch as a template for the plastic. Cut the plastic to the reduced size. Then, if you're using graphics, peel off the film. Create a sandwich for each part, consisting of the beaded area good side out, the cut plastic, and the lining good side out. If you're using a lining that doesn't ravel, such as ultra suede or leather, cut the lining the same size as your trimmed beaded piece. If you're using a woven fabric, cut the lining about one half inch larger all around than the trimmed beaded piece. Then fold the edges under and press them, notching if needed, so the lining's folded edges line up with the trimmed beadwork. Here's the most important part of this process. You must baste the individual parts together all around. If you don't, you will be sorry. Pin basting may work on larger pieces but on fine beading, you should stitch baste. There are two good basting stitches. The running stitch, your basic in and out straight line, is best to use in a contrasting color when you know you're going to remove the basting. I'm in favor of leaving the basting in place whenever possible, so I often use the other technique, the overhand stitch, also sometimes called the whip stitch. If you're leaving the basting in place, you want a good thread color match. And here's a nice surprise. Nylon beading thread can be colored with a permanent marker. Just be sure to give it a wipe with a paper towel before stitching. Now line up your basted parts. You can use a clothespin or document clamp to secure them, but use a buffer of non-woven so you don't break any beads. And guess what? Baste again. Then use the edging technique of your choice, either a standard beaded edging or a rolled beaded edging. This technique works best when the stitching base is a non-woven, but you can adapt it for any type of stitchery, including tapestry, needlepoint, embroidery, and woven fabric, though each will require a slightly different type of edge preparation. Now go make purses. We all know you can never have enough. This is Ann Benson. Thanks for joining me, and please join me again soon.